first of all, I just want to say it's the first time I've ever stood up like this in front of a group of people. So I feel like LeBron James right now. You know what I mean? <laughs> Pretty awesome. Uh, we should give Miguel a, a round of applause. That guy brings some juice now, doesn't he? But as far as uh, Jeff Levy goes, I mean, he, he hosted me on my recruiting visit here a long time ago. And uh, our dads both coached long time Texas high school football. And uh, just the thing I remember about him from even back then is just the relationships that he, he's developed. You know, he still talks to the people that we went to college with and, and made relationships, and, and, and they're all genuine. And uh, like my wife always says, I mean, everybody that meets him just loves him. You know, he's a lovable guy. He's, he's, he's always engaged when he's talking to you, and, and he remembers the little things. And, and uh, those things, like Miguel was saying, that, that matters to these players. You know, that's why you talk to, to Matt Corral, he would he'd run through that brick wall right now for him, you know, just because the relationship that he has with him. And then, you know, just, I mean, even uh, when I was a GA here, uh, just watching what they did on offense down in, in Waco and, and uh, everything they brought to the table, how they changed the game. I mean, they, they changed college football forever. And uh, always was interested in that. And when I had the chance uh, after coaching high school for a year to, to go join and just learn that because, I mean, even still today, everybody calls you. I mean, I get calls all the time about, you know, the details of the offense. And I, I better call somebody else, you know what I mean? But uh, it's, uh, it's, been, it's been a lot of fun. That's, that's my best friend, you know, been – been best friends since we were in college and uh, not only the offensive part of it that I love just the just the, the the meetings every single day it's just a lot more fun a lot more relaxing for me because you know, that's my best friend back there Coach Jason Kersey. Yeah, Coach um, I just wanted to ask you about how your position really will change in this new offense or, or will it change I'm, uh, are they still H-backs are they tight ends now like, how does your group change in this offense well I mean I mean, even when I got here last year, I, I, I see that position as the tight end position. We call them tight ends, H-backs. But these days, that's the same position, you know, especially uh, where, where, where our offense is going, how it was. But uh, even the NFL, you see all those guys. They do everything. You look at um, Kelsey. You look at Kittle. They line up in the wing. They line up in line. They split out. They're the single receiver. They're in the backfield. If you can't do all of that, you know, that, that – that, that position is kind of disappearing where it's just a true inline tight end. And so I expect to see a lot more of that. We ask our guys to do a lot mentally. You know, as, as you know, Coach Levy plays at, at an extremely fast tempo. And, and so when, when that happens, you, you can't, it's not like the old school where Peyton Manning got in there and it's a 12 word play. You know, so we, we ask those guys to do a lot mentally and, and then uh, what, what they're able to handle mentally kind of. It, it, it sets the standard for you know what all we can do on offense. Hey, James Allen, Hi, James Allen, how you doing? Good. Um, your your position, you know, you've got one guy that just ran today in the NFL and things, and so it's not very thick right now. But you got <clears throat> you brought in a, a guy from Missouri that's considered a high end blocker and things like that. So you just talked a little bit about how the guys are going to be used, but talk about your position and you know. They're going to have to play H-back and tight end just like they have in the past, right? That's right. Absolutely. I, I love my room. You know, I'm, I was so happy to have Braden back uh, for, for so many reasons. I mean, he's obviously a great football player and really came on making plays in, in the last couple of games. And, uh, but above that, I mean, he is the type of person you want on your football team. That's the kind of person you want to build your team around because of his mentality, how he approaches every single day. And... Uh, Obviously, he can play ball, too. And then kind of brought in Daniel Parker uh, with the same mentality. You know, as, as you know, as you guys know, he hadn't made a whole bunch of catches in his career. But if you talk to anybody on our football team right now, they say, that guy's somebody I won't play with. You know, I got chill bumps just talking about it because he does not care if he catches the ball. You know, and that's what, that's what makes him special. But he has told me 14 times, I can't wait to put the pads on. You know, and and... In addition to that, he's, he's bringing the young guys along. He wants to get those guys involved. He's extremely smart, extremely intelligent, comes from a great family. And, and uh, when, he, when he entered the portal, I, I, I told Leb, I said, hey, man, this guy's a special guy. And, and special player, but a special person. And that's exactly what Coach Venables is looking for on this football team. We're going to build 
we're going to build this program around guys like that. And I have the two freshmen that came in. I know they're going to be that one day, but I knew I needed another presence like that in the room. And uh, he's going to be special. Those, those other two guys, the, the two young guys, couldn't be more pleased with, with how they work. They come in, they don't say a word, they go to work, and, and they really can't say a word because those two older guys will tell them to be quiet. You know what I mean? And, uh, but that's good. They understand that, and they're not trying to overstep. They, they want to learn from those guys because they know how successful they've been, how long they've been doing it. Both of those guys are professionals. And so my goal for them is to get them to that level as fast as we possibly can, and then everything else will take care of itself. And they've done a great job with that. And then have two, two other guys in the room, Jackson Selman, Karsten Gross, that uh, – same thing. I mean, it's a great room to go into every single day because they're so hungry. I mean, they're, they're calling me at night. They're texting me at night. Hey, what, what about this, Coach? Because we ask them to do so much, it takes a little while to learn it, and we don't have a whole bunch of time. And so those guys are, are doing the extra, everything you could ask, and, and with a smile on their face. And uh, it's been a great group to be around. So, uh, is there anything you can save on the right? Hey, Joe, John. How's it going? Good. You said Jeff busted you on your recruiting business? Uh-huh. Uh, that just kind of sparked it. You know, we, we knew each other even before that because of our dads, but uh, that's where we first got to hang out. And then when I got here, obviously he was a, a student coach or a student assistant, however you, I don't know what we call him exactly, but, um, you know, just, just hit it off. I mean, if you talk to anybody, a lot of them are, we're the same person. You know what I mean? I'm just a little taller, a little bit, a little bit narrower than he is, you know, but uh, very similar. And, uh, that's, that's where it all started. Bob and Phil. Joe John, uh, going back to Braden, you know, he spoke a lot last season as if like that was his last season. So how surprised were you when he decided to come back and how big is it for the momentum uh, Jason and his team? Uh, it, was, it was a big surprise. And I thought I, was, I had two seniors that were going to be leaving and, and uh, was going to have to get good in a hurry with, with whoever was left. And uh, I think he just saw the opportunity. You know, a lot of a lot of guys that are taking that COVID year, that like uh, he, he saw the opportunity to better himself and better his stock for the next level. And uh, why wouldn't he? You know, everybody that that made plays in that room is gone except for him. And uh, you know, he, he's battled through some injuries in his career and thought that you know he he hadn't had a chance to put a full year together of his best stuff. And uh, He's ready to do that. I mean, his body is ready. He knows exactly how to take care of his body. Like I said, he's becoming a professional in every part of the game instead of just going out there and working out hard and playing hard. You know, he's, he's, he's taking it serious in the, in the meeting room, in the, uh, in, the, uh, in, the, in the nutritional part of it, and uh, in the training room. And that's what's going to allow him to be on the field as much as possible, and we're going to want him on there as much as we can. Biggest thing I, I told them, I said, listen, I, I understand exactly where you're at. I'm, I'm pretty much in the same place. You know, I don't know what's going to happen around here, but I do know this. We're going to get a really good football coach. Whether I'm here or not, this is Oklahoma, kind of like what Coach Stoops said. This, this place is so much bigger than, than any one person, any one coach, any, any one person ever. And uh, I just said, just, just take your time. There's no, re no need to rush. You got plenty of time. If, if we hire a guy, and you don't like what's, what's, gonna happen around here, then you got to make the best decision for yourself. But until then, for, for the good of the class, and, and because they're such good, good kids with great parents, um, they understood that, and because of our relationship, and because I was still here, and, and, uh, just very patient and. And, and that's what I asked them to do, and that's what they did. And then when they got Coach Venables, as a home run. And I, obviously, I was lucky enough to stay. And, and shoot, it, it worked out perfectly. Hey, Brandon. Coach, you know what you missed? Oh, yeah. Oh, I appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't miss anybody. 
They've heard enough. Uh, just if you could expound on the difference, what the H-back position is going to look like, not, sorry, the tight end position is going to look like compared to the H-back and how much learning are you doing to quickly regurgitate that to your guys? Uh, learning a little bit. You know, every time you, you get to go to a new place and, and start over with the offense, there's, there's always stuff that comes up. So when we went to Ole Miss, you know, there's – you put in the offer, this is how we're going to do it. And then you get into the year and you're like, man, if, if you could start over, you might do it like this. And so uh, every time you go to a new place where everybody's having to learn all the new stuff, then you can correct that stuff. And that's how it, it keeps evolving and keeps growing. Uh, but very similar to, to how we use them, we're, we're going to throw them the ball. We're going to expect them to block in the box and expect them to block in space. And that's, that's one of the things that uh, – you know, in recruiting tight ends, for me, has changed so much in that used to, you, very rarely would a tight end have to line up in the receiver spot and the slot spot and block a, a safety or linebacker, or even a corner sometimes in space. And so in order to do that, like if, if it was me, I would have struggled when I played. I'm so tall and lanky. It's hard for me to change direction. But some guys that are that tall can do that. It's just you, you're trying to see that on tape. And so those guys, um, I mean, they got to do really more than anybody on the football field. You know, you Kuzumbo talked about the correlation in terminology and how you receive it and tell the guys, okay, when we did it, it was called this, but now it's called that. Is Absolutely. It, that? it is. It's, it's, uh, it's, in football, you learn everybody runs the same place. I mean, and so it's just there, there's going to be details that, that people do differently, but everybody's going to run power. Everybody's going to run counter. Everybody's going to run inside zone, outside zone. And so, just what are we calling it, and what are the differences in, okay, we, we, we make this call when they do this, instead of, hey, sometimes we, we used to make that call. And so, just, just being able to translate that between Levy and, and the guys that we have on offense, and then even our players. And so, that's where the tight ends have a little bit of an advantage. And so, I can say, hey, this is so-and-so from last year. You know, and that's, that's where they can correlate it really fast. And, and I try to help those other coaches that, that can correlate it for, for their guys as well. Absolutely. It feels like business as usual. The only thing that's different, I was laughing this morning, and so we, we do competitions at the end of our workouts. And so usually uh, whenever the head coach is happy, that means that his side of the ball did well. You know what I mean? It's like, great job today. Well, we're sitting over there saying, eh, that wasn't very good. You know what I mean? And that's, that's how it works. But other than that, uh, Coach Venables has done a great job of, uh, of bringing in the right people that – it's all about Oklahoma, and uh, it's a little bit different in that the practice schedule. You don't just get to sit next to the guy that's that's making it, so you can ask the questions. You gotta you gotta talk to him, and he's gotta go talk to Coach Venables. But other than that, it's been it's been really good. Steve, you you're one of the few guys on the staff that's well, at least been around for six years. Uh, similarities, I think, uh, especially going back to, to Coach Stoops and, and uh, Coach Venables, the standard is, is here, and it does not change for anybody. And uh, that, that goes uh, back to Coach Smitty. I mean, he sets the standard. He's with those guys more than we are. And so setting that standard and not lowering it for anybody. Coach always says you, you raise the standard, right, and you lose the losers. You, you lower the standard. And you, and you lose the winners. And so that standard is high, and we got a bunch of winners on our football team that, that are, are absolutely loving living up to that standard with Coach Smitty. Uh, the other thing that's uh, is good is I've, I've been a lot of places, been with a lot of head coaches. I've been a lot of places, been with a lot of head coaches. Y'all know that. But the sole mission is the, the player development part of it. I've never been around anything like it. It's It's something that... If I'm ever, if I ever get to be a head coach, that's 100% going to be a part of my program because these guys 
I mean, they, they feel it. They talk to you about it. You know, it's, everybody talks about it. we're going to develop you as a young man, but you come in here and you, you see four former players, all different ages, and they're with them every single day. Their office is right by their uh, locker room, and it's not me. I got to see if, you know, whoever is, maybe he's got his head down today. You know, we got, I mean, we have 30, 30 something people, 40 people in our, in our staff meeting. And every one of these guys is, is, is touching our players. And so you never miss. You know, you never miss a guy that's having a bad day. We need to find out why he's having a bad day. All right? And then, then that's just part of it. You know, you're preparing them for life after football. Uh, it, it's something that truly matters. And all these guys think they're going to be NFL guys. They're not going to be. Not all of them. And so when they leave here, they're going to be prepared. And that's, that's something that's, that's bigger than anything. When you brought the number of staff in, Yep. It is. It's, it's something that I think uh, is great for this place. I think it's uh, something that I think we were missing out on uh, before before this time. And and uh, Coach Venables has done a great job, and his staff, Thad, has, has done a great job of bringing in not just a bunch of people, but every single person in that meeting room brings value to our program. And uh, uh, it's something that affects our, our players, and that's what – at the bottom, at the end of the day, we want to make those guys better. We want to prepare those guys for life after football. And if they can go play for a little bit longer, we'll prepare them for that too. But um, it's it's been a it's been a, a blessing. For more information, you can visit TulsaWorld.com.